Say that I know the weight of 10 ducks and they range between zero and six kilograms. What I can note is I've got one duck between zero and one kilogram. I've got two ducks between one and two kilograms, three ducks between two and three kilograms, three ducks between three and four kgs, two ducks between four and five kilograms, and one duck between five and six kilograms. And that's what gives this binomial histogram its shape, where the height is representative of a probability. But let's say that we don't have a fixed number of ducks. Let's say we've got some population of ducks and weight being the variable that we are measuring. We could break down the buckets that we are categorizing their weight infinitely. So we have got some kind of a smooth curve that's representative of the probabilities of finding the weights of each of these ducks. This is what's known as a probability density function where without getting into too much detail, the area becomes the probability. Getting technical, when you're verifying a probability density function, it has to satisfy some properties. The first being the area under the curve must equal one. So the sum of all of the probabilities is equal to one. The second is that all of the y values need to be positive. That is that the probability density needs to be positive. And knowing this, we can determine the probability between two bounds of an event by evaluating the integral under the probability density function. We're gonna look at two examples here. Okay, the first one is we're gonna verify that a function is a probability density function. So it needs to satisfy the two properties that we just looked at. So I'm gonna show you this a first property is true and instead of writing fx a dx, I'm actually gonna write the function which is 24 x to the power of negative three, okay, using my index laws there. And I'm gonna show that that integral is equal to one. So I'm gonna evaluate it and it should turn out. Okay, and so we can see there, we can verify that when we evaluate that integral, it's gonna be equal to one. So it's between the bounds, one's equal to one. Very nice, so we've verified that. The second fact here is that all of the y values must stay positive. So really, um, this is actually right here, this is a true statement, okay? Because really it's like saying 24, uh, sorry, let me, let me explain that a little better. It's like saying, we've got X that's on the denominator here and it's cubed. Now the only time, and if we've, if we've got a positive number, okay, we need to divide it by a positive number uh, for this to stay uh, positive for values of X. Now, our x inputs go from three to six, so those are always gonna be positive numbers, which means that this will always be positive. So you always have positive y values. So we're, we're verified, so I'd say therefore, the function is a probability density function. So I'd say, yep, we have got a PDF, very good. Second example. Okay, so we've got a continuous, uh, continuous random variable x uh, and it's given a probability density function defined by below. First part wants us to sketch this function. Now this cognitive verb sketch implies that we've actually got to do some working and show a sketch. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly do that. Okay, so we've got a function that sort of looks like that. So that's our sketch. Now for the purposes of highlighting these probabilities, I'm just gonna copy and paste this function where I see fit. So let's get that as a copy. Okay, so let's start part B. Let's start part, oh no. Let's start part B of this, which is calculating some probabilities. Okay, now we've got a, a probability, a probability, and a, a conditional probability. So we're just gonna uh, go through each of these individually. So if we're calculating the probability that x is uh, smaller than 0 0.5, then really what we're what we're doing here, and I'll and I'll paste this, I'll paste this graph here. Okay, what we're doing here is we're finding when x is equal to, when x is equal to a half, and we want to know the probability that it's less than that. So all of this area all of this area there, okay? Because the area is equal to the probability. And the way in which we find the area is we evaluate the integral. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'd say that the probability is equal to the integral from zero to a half of the function, which is e to the negative x dx. So I'm gonna evaluate that 
and whatever pops out will be the probability. All right, so we're gonna get that the probability is roughly equal to 0 0.4, 40%. Okay, that's, that's roughly equal to. Okay, second one. We've got the probability that x, our variable, is gonna be greater than or equal to one. All right, so again, let's get a graph here. Let's paste this, paste, paste it, graph here. Let's illustrate what we're trying to find here when x is greater than or equal to one. What we're gonna have here is x being one, and it's gonna be greater than it. So we're saying we're going to evaluate this between the integral of one to infinity, okay, of e to the negative x dx. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so what we're left with is just one on e. Now, to kind of point this section here, okay, I know putting an infinity as a bound is not necessarily a thing, but if you've got like this really, this reads as we've got a negative one over e to the power of infinity. And e to the power of infinity is like the biggest number possible. So even if you had like, if you take the limit, like if you take a limit as e, <laughs> like if you put h as your limit here and the limit as h approaches infinity, okay, like without getting too much into the limits because that's not necessarily what we're going over here, um, we would say that this approximates to be zero as h approaches infinity. So as 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 the power is getting really really large, we're approaching zero there. So we can we can kind of just evaluate that as such. And one over e is roughly equal to about zero point zero point three seven. Okay, third one we're going to do here. Let me just write it over here. We've got. Uh, we've got the probability. We've got the probability that x is greater than or equal to one, given that x is greater than a 0 0.5. Right. Now I've got the conditional probability formula there. That's on the uh, formula sheet. Okay. But I personally, I'm going to relate it to it at the end. But I personally like to visualize on a graph what the condition, uh, what the conditional probability is representing here. Okay, so first thing I'm just going to read, what is my condition? I have to make sure that x is greater than or equal to 1, uh, sorry, equal to a half. So I take this point there, that's that's a half. x must be greater than this. So this is the condition here. So I'm only selecting, I'm reducing my sample space. And that makes sense because if we look at this, if we look at this conditional probability formula, what we've got here is the condition and that reduces the sample space. Okay, so instead of selecting from everything, you're only selecting from the event B occurring, which is that condition there. And we've got to make sure that X is greater than or equal to one. Okay, so we're kind of selecting the green area here, the green area, which I'm going to try and scribble over. But really, uh, the probability, the probability so if we we're going to write this in integral notation here, I'd say it's going to be the integral from 1 to infinity of the function, because that is the green area, okay, divided by the integral from 0 0.5 to infinity, because that is the blue area. So we need to evaluate these two integrals separately. Okay, so for the numerator expression, we just get 1 over e, which again is roughly equal to 0 0.37, and then for the denominator, which is our blue area, we are going to now evaluate that. Okay, so we get one over root e. Okay, one over root e, uh, which uh, as a decimal, I'm gonna put this in my calculator. Okay, so it's roughly equal to 0 0.61. So I would say therefore, therefore, the probability, the probability that x is greater than or equal to one, given that x is greater than 0 0.5, I'd say that's going to be equal to uh, the numerator, which is one over e, divided by one over root e, and simplifying this, okay, I've got uh, these two, so that's gonna be root e on top of these two, which is uh, over e, or you could, you could uh, cross multiply, that's fine, we've just got division of fractions there, uh, which is, well, that's e to the power of 0 0.5 uh, divided by e to the power of 1, which is, which is equal to uh, e to the power of negative 0 0.5. So I guess you could say that's a 1 on root e.